हेलो एवरी वन हाई एंड वेलकम यू ऑल एन फिजिक्स अध्ययन सो इन लास्ट वीडियो वी हैव स्टार्टेड विद फोटो इलेक्ट्रिक इफेक्ट एंड ट्राई टू एक्सप्लेन दैट फेनोमेना बाई आइंस्टाइन हाइपोथिस एंड वी लुक इन टू सम ट्यूनिंग पैरामीटर्स एंड वी एक्सपेक्टेड दैट वॉट शुड हैपन विद दिस हाइपोथिस एंड वॉट वी ऑब्जर्व विद एक्सपेरिमेंटल सेटअप वॉज सेम so uh, now in this particular video we are going back to the experimental setup and try to tune some other parameters and uh, let's see what will happen and how the particular graphs between those parameters look like so let's start the video now let's get back to the experimental setup and uh, see how the electrons were primary electrons were transferring from cathode to anode or one place to another and uh, try to explain with this particular hypothesis which is einstein hypothesis and let's see so uh, this was our uh, rough experimental setup so this was my emitter this was my volt uh, voltage the battery which i'm applying and this was my cathode and this was my anode so let me write it as a and b if i shine some light on this particular cathode then primary electrons will emission and the emission of primary electrons will take place and they will go from here to In the place A to B, and the circuit will complete, and there will be a flow and current, and we will see the the emitter will read some particular current, and that current is nothing but I P E that we was talking about. Okay, so how this process is taking place? Let's see. So if I have a particular wave, uh, photons which has some energy H nu, and this is greater than H mu naught, then what will happen? Electron will have an kinetic energy. and that kinetic energy is nothing but uh, h nu minus h mu naught so this much of kinetic energy that the electron will have if i have this particular situation so uh, okay what is the role of this voltage what uh, that we are applying over here so let's consider the, uh, first let us look at this role of this particular volts voltage source so this voltage source this b is positive and this a is negative when say is negative b is positive so this voltage source will create an additional field over here let me say this field is an electric field which is e because it has some potential difference and there is a particular distance i am assuming that it is some uniform electric field over here so electron has a negative charge so uh, the force on the electron will be f is equal to minus e into e okay so if the electric field is directed from b to a then this force we expect will uh, will act from a to b so what this potential source is doing that it will take an electron from a and it will pass to the electron to b and then the circuit will complete and there will be a flow in current now assume uh, that this particular light source with this condition that h nu is greater than h mu not and if i reverse the polarity of this battery then what will happen so instead of taking an electron from a to b now it will apply a force or let's see from electric field it will have an electric field that is directed from a to b because i have changed the polarity so if i have changed the polarity then this a will become positive and this will become negative if this i change the sign of this battery okay if i change this back sorry for the diagram but you can understand if i change the polarity then this will be the case this will become positive and this will become negative then the forces will be acting along the force on this particular electron electric field be directed from a to b then the force will act from b to a force will act from b to a now electron try to move from a to b if it has some this particular kinetic energy and uh, by the emission of photo electrons electron will try to go from cathode to anode but this external perturbation which we has applied uh, the external field will try to go uh, try to move the electron from b to a electron is trying to go from a to b but this force is trying to get that electron from b to b so there will be a particular potential when this potential when this potential uh, or this battery energy is equal to this and kinetic energy of this electron then electron uh, the force on the electron will be balanced on each way then no electron will pass through a to b and there will be a no photo current 
So at this particular situation, there is no photo current. So that particular potential is known as stopping potential. I can write it as Vs. So this is this potential is called as stopping potential. This is your stopping potential. So what that value will be? It will be the maximum kinetic energy of that electron. So if the potential and potential we applied is equal to the maximum kinetic energy of that electron, then there will be a no emission of photoelectron or there will be a no photo current in the circuit. So that's the first case that one should observe. Now we, we can observe a second case when we put my potential to be zero. So when my battery, when there is no battery or there is a short circuit, let me draw it as like this. Okay. When there is no battery or this potential of battery, I am taking to be the zero or I'm increasing this potential. So my V is zero at particular, I'm going from minus Vs to some positive V, then we will encounter this zero potential also. So at this potential, there is no external field between A and B. So there will be no external force between A and B. Then this electrons kinetic energy are responsible to make an electron to travel from A to B. Okay, so at that particular instant, I will expect some photoelectric current if assume, uh, so remember this, this is the case that H nu is always greater than H mu naught, then this all observations are valid. Then we expect some photoelectric current uh, flowing uh, because of this photoelectrons flowing from A to B because of their uh, kinetic energies. Okay, so now if I plot a graph between this uh, potential that potential if I vary the potential V at fixed frequency mu then how will be the photo, uh, photo current vary so let's see so suppose I am okay let me mark this so on x axis I am measuring uh, the voltage so this is my V on y axis I am measuring this photoelectric current current due to this photoelectrons so there will be a potential Vs which I talked about stopping potential at this potential there will be a no photo current so this is zero what will happen at V is equal to zero this is your V equal to zero we expect some uh, photo electrons that is due to their kinetic energy so I am expecting let's say this is the current that we are expecting so between Vs and zero what will happen so at Vs there is no photo current, photo electrons. At V0 there are some photo electrons. So in between there is an increase of uh, photo electrons. So we will expect a behavior something like this, which we can see. This will be the behavior because uh, the number of photo electrons are increased between this when I switch from negative potential to some positive potential. Now. If I increase uh, the potential further, then what will happen that uh, some uh, that elect the number of photoelectrons get saturated and we will uh, we can expect some uh, saturation in current. OK, so this will increase and this will saturate over this and this whole observation is done at constant frequency fixed mu. If I change the mu, then the behavior will be different and that we will see in some uh, questions we will solve some questions where this uh, frequency is varied then what will happen and this observation is done at constant intensity let me uh, call this as i1 so if in the intensity is fixed then the current is saturated at some particular potential now if i increase the intensity then what will happen so do you expect that vs will change just think about it if i increase the intensity then what will happen so think in other, other way, this stopping potential depends upon the kinetic energy of electrons. Kinetic energy depends on the frequency of this incident radiation. So does it have any role with the intensity? No. Then 
we don't expect any change in this stopping potential. So if new is fixed, this Vs is fixed. If I vary the new, the new will change. This Vs will change. Okay. Do you expect a higher value of IPE at V is equal to zero? Yes, we do expect because if I increasing the intensity, we are increasing the number of uh, photons and we are increasing the number of primary electrons. So we, we should expect a larger photo photo current. So if I expect this, then the behavior will be this and some saturation in current. So this is some other frequency I2 where I2 is greater than I1. So whenever you are giving, uh, you are given a problem to plot something, you just think about the intensity and frequency independently so that you don't mesh up with all these concepts. Okay, so this is a third graph that one should know in photoelectric effect. And now, okay, so the, at V is equal to zero, there is something uh, which is called rate of flow of photoelectrons. And there is something which is called rate of production of photoelectrons. So rate of production is uh, dependent upon the number of uh, photons that we have. Okay. So because more number of photons, more number of production of photoelectrons. And flow of photoelectrons depends upon the potential. Okay. So at this particular potential at V is equal to zero, what is the case that rate of flow of rate of uh, flow of photoelectrons is less than rate of production production of photoelectrons that you can think that the number of photons is coming on that metallic surface and they are producing some uh, primary electrons but this potential is restricting you to go from one place to another. So root rate of production is greater than the rate of flow of electrons. So let me relate this rate of uh, flow of electrons with an, uh, this energy. So if we have, if we increase the rate of flow or we if we increase the potential, then this rate of flow of photoelectrons will increase. It means that your IPE will increase. So this is also the behavior that we are expecting in this particular region second. So if I increase this potential, I am getting a behavior that is increased in current. So this is also explained by this uh, rate of flow of electrons and production of electrons. If my V is large, what will happen if I further increase this potential? So if I further increase this V, then what is the case? This rate of flow of photoelectrons is equal to the rate of production of photoelectrons. Then there I will expect that IP will be maximum or with, which is saturated. Okay, so this is the case when V is large. So we will get a saturated voltage of this saturated photoelectric current. So uh, this was the whole uh, third, your third graph, which was explained by this rate of production and rate of flow of photoelectrons. And that is very well understand that how this uh, curve, why the curve should look like this. So uh, now let me explicitly write the form of stopping potential. So this is stopping potential. And we denote this stopping potential by uh, Vs. So how it is defined? It is the repulsive potential energy. Repulsive potential energy. That is equal to the kinetic energy of that particular electron. So repulsive potential energy is E times the Vs. That is potential times the charge. And the kinetic energy of this electron is H nu minus H mu naught. So at this particular instant, when this condition is satisfied, the rate of flow of electrons is zero. If that is the case, this means that the photoelectric current is zero. 
So from here we can write this expression for V S, which is nothing but H nu by E minus H mu naught by E. This implies that V S depends upon frequency. And this is independent of intensity. So now we know this IPE maximum depends upon intensity. Depends upon intensity. Sorry, uh, depends upon intensity. And this is independent of mu, independent of mu. And this we have seen in previous video and this some the previous conclusions of this. So we can plot where I choose at the intensity is fixed. So I is fixed and I vary the new. So variable is mu that is the frequency. So let me draw this graph. We have on x axis, I have the potential V, and on y axis, I have this photoelectric current. And this particular experiment is done as fixed intensity, and I vary the frequency. So, if I have some particular frequency, let's say mu1, then it has some stopping potential Vs. And the graph will uh, something look like this here it will increase and then it will go and saturate so this is IPE maximum let's say this particular curve was for frequency mu1 so I am writing this as Vs1 and now I am choosing an another frequency mu2 which is greater than mu1 then how the graph will look like so we know that uh, this stopping potential depends upon this frequency if I increase the frequency then the stopping potential will be more negative so now the next stopping potential is Vs2 and this IPE maximum depends upon intensity but intensity is fixed so we expect that as higher potential higher V value the IPE maximum will be same so it will start increasing in this sense and goes and then again it will saturate to this IPE maximum so uh, this curve one should expect at fixed intensity and when I vary the frequency. So in previous we were varying the intensity and this mu was fixed. So mu was fixed and the, these stopping potential values were the same. So uh, I think this is enough and in next video we will be solving some problems that are based on uh, this particular photoelectric effect and asked in various competitive exams. So let's uh, apply this theory what we have studied here in some numerical problems in the next video Hey, thank you very much for watching this video. If you like the content gives us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe the channel The link is over here Make sure you write a comment below in the comment box and share it with your friends Thank you very much for watching this video and we will see you in the next video. Take care. Bye. Bye